Hi, this is Crypto Ice, and today I want to talk about a couple of the biggest falsehoods you will hear about the company Ripple. If you're kind of new to Ripple and the token XRP, a couple of the things you'll hear is, well, the company Ripple can just make more coins. Well, I'm here to tell you that David Schwartz, the chief technology officer, um, has come out in a quote and said there will never be any more coins created. There's a hundred billion total supply and there will never be more than that. So look in the link description below and you'll see that. The other one is that we hear quite often is that Ripple holds more than half of the supply, which they do, and why that's such a big problem. Well, David Schwartz again in 2017, this is what he has to say about the subject. He says, imagine two competing companies trying to do what Ripple is doing. So you have Ripple and you have Ripple, but without the XRP war chest and revenue model. Which one would you bet on, he says. Well, me, I'm going to go with the one with the war chest. And uh, I'm going to explain to you why. For the last year, I have been in Brad Kimes investment perspectives telegram group and I can tell you guys my XRP knowledge and IQ was quite considerably lower than many of the people in that group but I've been soaking that up for well over a year and my XRP IQ has just gone up exponentially so anyone that really wants to learn from some of the best XRP researchers in the space I challenge you to go check it out and uh, first and foremost, a guy by the name of Mickey B. Fresh. This guy, outside of the company Ripple, he has to be in the top five of most knowledgeable people about XRP in the world. I mean, he, he, he does tireless research, and he also breaks it down to people, whether they have a lot of knowledge or a little knowledge, he's willing to break it down for you. So truly want to just give him a plug because he does incredible work. This is what he has to say in response to David Schwartz calling um, the Ripple holding half the supply the war chest. He says the war chest is what can always hold back central banks or governments from overtaking the network. He says it's a check on power until they mutually decide what to do with the escrow. So this makes perfect sense to me. Like, you either hold the war chest or you don't. And do you think that the central banks need to be kept honest? Have you been watching the Federal Reserve and the way they're printing money? Do you think that you can rely on their good graces? No. Um, let me just break this down with a sports analogy. Um, many of us in this quarantine time have watched... Uh, the Last Dance, the Chicago Bulls documentary, right? The thing that stuck out to me in that documentary, because everything comes back to an, uh, comparing to XRP, right? <laughs> thing that stuck out to me was Scottie Pippen had one of the worst NBA contracts in NBA history, right? And why was it terrible? Because he essentially gave up his check on power, his war chest, his leverage. When he renegotiated his contract years before the current one ended, you know, I understand why he did it. He had 11 siblings. He had a dad that was disabled. He had a brother that was disabled. He was trying to firm up financial security. Can't blame him for that, but really it was a huge mistake because he gave away that war chest. He, when he signed on that dotted line, the Bulls management basically could do what they wanted with them. They basically got a Hall of Famer for pennies on the dollar, okay? And uh, let's compare that to LeBron, one of the greatest players of all time, right? This guy understood his war chest, his set of skills that he had to offer teams. Then when he made his last move to the Los Angeles Lakers and he met up with Magic Johnson, he wasn't giving up his war chest until his contract was about to expire. And then, you know, he, they mutually 
made it a win-win. He wanted Anthony Davis. He wanted this much money. He wanted this many years. Until all the ducks were in a row, he was not signing on that dotted line. So I want you to think of the company Ripple like LeBron. And I want you to think of Magic Johnson like the central banks and the governments. Okay, They don't come together and make this deal until it's a win-win for both of them. Okay, so I just like to put it in sports terms to make it make sense. Okay, and one other thing I want to throw out there is that Mickey, Mickey B makes one other great point that, about this, that not only is the war chest um, great because it keeps a check on power, but it also provides multiple use cases to grow the ecosystem. Okay, if you look in the link below, in the description, you'll see a video on Mickey B. Fresh's YouTube channel um, of Miguel Villas, who worked for Ripple, and this is what he had to say. He says, I think one of the advantages we have as a company is the fact that we sit on 60 billion XRP. So the day that Goldman wants to open up their trading desk, they don't have to go find XRP. They just give me a call which is nice. So essentially what he's saying there is when central banks and governments and when gold, when the Goldmans decide they want to call, they're not going to have to tell them to go on the open market and find XRP. They have the resources to give them XRP, which is a huge advantage to build the ecosystem. So there's a couple points about how this Ripple holding the XRP supply, really, instead of it being a huge trust issue and problem, which I understand for some people it's just going to be that way, but for me, that is why I'm hugely bullish. This is a strategic weapon. This is a war chest beyond almost anything else I can think of in the space where they are going to be able to build this ecosystem. So I hope, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, thanks. Talk to you later.